Hey guys, this is why I stayed with someone I knew wasn't right for me. So it started how they always do, you know, you're happy or excited when you're with someone new, it's all nice, you know. He was really sweet, he looked after me. He, like I really felt like I did trust him and stuff like that. And then slowly as time went on, I kind of realized there was a few hiccups in the road, you know. I guess it began, I was having a really rough year and we started dating and I think like I probably wasn't my best self at the time, like at the time and that might have been a bit hard or challenging to deal with. And so I always expected from a partner someone who looked out for me and looked after me and if I was really upset or crying or anything like that, I would expect them to come over and be there for me. And he, on the other hand, I feel like didn't really feel comfortable looking after people or in the realm of emotions and tears and all of that. Like I feel like it wasn't really his forte or his domain or anything like that. So. I could tell he kind of struggled a little bit like handling me when I was a bit upset and things like that, which I understand. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, so I don't hold it against him or anything, but I was like, mm, this is something that might be an issue down the track. Thought about it and I was like, I don't think I want to break up with him. Like, I don't think it's that bad that it's worth breaking up with him yet. And I was like, I don't really want to be alone and I don't really want to have to deal with all this crap on my own, really. I just wanted to be happy and I thought having him around would make me happy, you know? But as time progressed, it kind of seemed to get worse and worse. And I think he might not have even realized he was doing it, but I think subconsciously maybe he was pushing me back a bit um, without even realizing because he didn't know how to handle the tough times. Got to the point where I would message him, hey, how's it going, da 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 da, and he'd never really just check in with me, like he would not never just send me a like, hi, how are you, you know, like it was always kind of one-sided. It was always me checking in with him and waiting for him to say, oh, and how has your day been, you know. Um, and this kind of really grated on my nerves because it was something I really thought highly of in relationships. I really thought that your partner should care and your partner should put in the effort and the time to chat to you and make an effort to know how your day goes and things like that. And I don't think that's asking too much, especially when I was really upset and stuff. Like it was really hard to know that he didn't even know what was going on or he, Hadn't even asked me to that thing next week or whatever it was. So I decided to tell him that this was a bit of an issue for me and really put my foot forward and stand up for myself and be like, look, I'd love for you to give me a bit more of this, you know, like try to communicate with him. The kind of the pattern just kept going, you know, like he just kept not knowing what was going on and I was really sad and it just kind of became this revolving cycle. And I was like, oh, I think... I don't think we're going to be able to work through this. I think we might have to look at breaking up, but there was still something, something there that I couldn't put my finger on that I couldn't work out, like that made me want to stay. And I think the reasons why people stay are different for everyone. And I think everyone's got their own circumstance. For me, I think it was the fact that I just didn't want to have to go through everything by myself, you know? And I wouldn't have him to call on when I was having those really rough days, you know? I stayed, I stayed another six months, but then it got to the point where I was like, nah, nothing's changing. The same pattern's playing itself out over and over again. I feel like I have said something and nothing's really changed. I haven't seen any action on his part. He said, yeah, yeah, sure, I can do that, I can do that. But words, sometimes actions speak louder than them. And, so I decided to break up with him. I was like, I have to do this. I hate breaking up with people. Like I am the worst when it comes to breaking up with people, but that's another video. <laughs> so I sat him down, I broke up with him and I cried. Like I, I wasn't the one being broken up with yet. I cried. Like, how does that make any sense? Right? He said, are you sure you want to do this? Like you seem a bit upset. Like, are you sure this is the right decision? And I was like, I knew deep down, I knew it was the right decision. I knew we weren't really super compatible on the emotional side of things. And I know for some people it's probably not a huge deal, but for me, that was like my number one was, I really need someone to be able to handle me at my worst as well as at my best. And I knew that maybe he wasn't quite 
that guy for me. So I knew that and yet I went home after that experience and I cried for the next two days. I was so upset. I wrote about it in a diary. I did everything I could and I was just really confused. I was like, I know this on one hand, I know this is the right decision, but on the other hand, why am I so upset by this? Because you think that if I knew it was the right decision and I knew this was all good, I would just be able to handle it and move on and feel so probably some relief. But I was just a ball of emotion and I just couldn't quite work that out. It wasn't until a, f a few months later that I kind of realized I'd just ripped out one of my coping strategies. Like I think it would have been easy to go back to him because he would have been able to be there for me when I was sad about things or when I was going through shit and things like that again because I was using him as a way to pet myself back up, pretty much. I didn't know how to do that on my own back then. And so I thought, you know, like tell my boyfriend everything and get him to come over and we can go out and we can do all these fun things and take my mind off everything, you know, like that's, that's what we'll do and that'll make me feel better. And I realized that was my coping strategy. That's how I handled crap in my life you know like I'd get go out with a friend or I'd go out with him suddenly I didn't have that anymore I'd kind of I'd broken up with him and I'd taken away my own coping strategy and I'd realized that the sadness that I felt after breaking up with him was that it was the oh my god what am I going to do now instead to make myself feel better because all these problems haven't gone away they're still here and I'm kind of still stuck in this place and I don't have anyone to go run to anymore. So I knew it was the right decision breaking up with him and I still stand by that. I didn't go back to him because I didn't feel like anything would have changed if I had of. But there was that part of me that was like, what are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do now? So then when you have an experience like that, you really, it really makes you think. And I got to the realization that, you know what? I don't think this is that healthy. And I got into Buddhism. Buddhism started talking about attachment. I don't know if any of you have read books on Buddhism. I found um, Buddhism for breakups very helpful. You have an attachment to this person and you expect them to make you happy. You expect them to pick up the pieces when you can't pick them up yourself. Or whenever you're sad, you just run into their arms and it makes it all better for a little while. You can't put all your focus and all your happiness onto someone else because someone else can leave. Like he could have left me. And then what would I have been stuck with just on my own? And I would have been even more upset than what I normally am. And it's because if you ever put all your happiness into someone else or something else, people do it all the time with, oh, when I get that promotion or when I'm earning a hundred thousand dollars a year, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. Right. And it's all based on that condition. If you can't create your own happiness within yourself and if you don't love yourself enough to really look after yourself, um, your happiness will be fleeting. I'd put it all into him. I, I knew it wasn't right for me and I knew I wanted to get to kind of break it up, but all my happiness was there and therefore I'd gotten rid of my happiness as well as gotten rid of my boyfriend um, and become single again and had to kind of put it all, like reass reassess my whole life really. Like, why am I struggling so much with this? And I think part of it is like the little, you want that knight in shining armor to come and fix everything, you know, like the little fairy tale thinking that we have all grown up with in this generation. But put your happiness in your, in yourself and you'll always be able to look after yourself. You're, you're, you're there for yourself 100% of the time. And that's why I stayed with someone I knew wasn't right for me for a lot longer than I needed to because my happiness was put all into his arms. I hope this helps.